Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is December 20th, so let's hop right into the advent calendars. Smokey is... Smokey, come here. I don't know if you can see her. She's sitting on the red couch there. Here she is. Okay, let's see. December 20th. What do we got? Oh, a little white snowman. Yum. Here, I'll let Smokey up and show her. To the camera, here's Smokey. She'll probably sit around here while I talk. Um, I feel like my mouth is getting better, although I do sometimes drool a little bit out of the side. <laughs> so apologies if that happens during this video. So today's story is called Christmas Triptych by Stephen Leacock. And um, for those of you who aren't aware, Stephen is a beloved Canadian author. Uh, he's a humor writer, which was, which is what he's known for mostly, and he lived between the years of 1869 and 1944. So obviously he did now, but um, we still give out a um, humor medal in his honor. The Stephen Leacock Award is bestowed upon um, Canadian humor writers, and uh, I'm not sure if it's given out each year, but um, it's quite famous. So I was very excited to see that he was the author of today's stories. And as the title suggests, it's three different stories. The first is called Christmas Rapture, and in brackets it says pre-war. And this is basically um, a first person narration of this guy who's talking about his plans for Christmas day. And he's extremely sarcastic and it's very funny. He also uses the word A all the time. So he like jokes about how he's, you know, buying tickets for like the policeman's Christmas ball and the garbage man's ball and you know all these sorts of things and you know he mentions that he bought a ticket for the policeman ball and the man who sold it to him had a gun and you know so he's very sarcastic he talks about uh, the Christmas gifts that he's bought for his friends he's wearing first so they don't look too new um yeah so very sarcastic and funny the second story is called Hoodoo McFiggin's Christmas, and this was the funniest. This is about, um, so it starts, for a parent to get up under cover of the darkness of night and palm off a 10 cent necktie on a boy who had been expecting a $10 watch and then say that an angel sent to him is low, undeniably low. And he tells the story of watching a young boy open up his Christmas stocking in the morning, you know, hoping and expecting all these great toys, but it, he just ends up getting like practical gifts like pants and collars and um, like, what else did he get? Uh, boots, <laughs> like things that he didn't want, but obviously he needs as a child. Um, and you know, he gets a book and he's hoping it's a book of adventure stories, but turns out it's just a Bible. So that's very funny. And then the last story is called Merry Christmas. And this story appeared in 1918. And that is significant because the story is about a young man who's trying to write about Christmas and he's having trouble because he's kind of complaining that Christmas is too commercial now, which is interesting to think that people were thinking that way in 1918. A <laughs> hundred years later, I think we're still thinking that, but um, it's probably much worse. So anyways, Father Time comes to him and invites in Father Christmas, i.e. Santa Claus. And it's clear that Santa Claus uh, is suffering from PTSD. He's shell-shocked and, you know, he thinks he's hearing gunshots outside and it's really just a car. He, you know, he, um, he worries that he hears children screaming, but it's really just like the wind outside. And Santa Claus is all, you know, bedraggled looking. His sack of toys have been, um you know, they're destroyed by the rain and the snow. And um, he is kind of, it's clear that he's, you know, shell-shocked literally. And um, they're trying to help him feel better. He notices that there's a wooden rocking horse on the mantle and he starts trying to mend it. Um, and basically it's a story about trying to bring back the spirit of Christmas, not because, um, you know, we all need to be reminded about how fun it is to receive things, but why peace on earth, which is kind of one of the underlying messages of Christmas is so important for the world over. Um, he talks about children in like Serbia and stuff, um, which I think we forget about. 
you know, all these countries in the world that um, know war so intimately and always seem to be caught up in it. Whereas here in North America, we've been so lucky to be um, removed from it for so long. Um, again, such an important message that this story is bringing us as part of the advent calendar. And um, I really appreciate getting these reminders so close to Christmas because, you know, we get so caught up in the ideas of ticking things off our list and making sure things are perfect for our families when really the focus should be on uh, being kind to others. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this set of stories because it wasn't completely depressing, very funny um, the first two, but the last one is, you know, serious and um, really thought provoking. So I really love that they came together as this set. Um, I believe there's one other blogger who is doing these uh, videos reviewing the short stories and that's Laura from Reading in Bed and I'll link to her um, YouTube channel and her blog below. But she was analyzing the kind of different triangle designs on the front there, which I sort of stopped doing after the first few days. But I looked at today's and this one seems like it's kind of the hands of a clock, a little like, you know, a center on the, the hands of the clock. And that is makes a lot of sense because time is such a big part of these stories. Um, you know, they're from, an, they're from another time. And, uh, you know, especially the last one, 1918, right after the First World War, or is that towards the end of the First World War? I'm not sure. Clearly I need to brush up on my history, but war is still very much the forefront of everyone's minds at that point. So you can see why Lee Cock would write a story um, that incorporates war into the idea of Christmas time. Uh, yeah, so there you have it, December 20th, as time flies. Um, where'd Smokey go? Nope, oh, she's back to the couch cleaning herself. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll speak with you tomorrow on December 21st. Bye!